You're listening to a Skewed Orbit original podcast. How are you? Welcome to the Rachel LaForce Show. This is me, Rachel LaForce, and it is my show. This is a spiritual podcast from me, a comedian, because healing is hilarious. It's hilarious that we do this. Um, Self-help is embarrassing. Um, Generational trauma is both heartbreaking, difficult, and also very funny. It's very funny that we're all doing this. And I think that if I can be of any service, it's like, let's have a little bit of levity and like, let's just roll with it. So um, that's just a bit about me if you're new. Okay. If most of you are OGs, some of you may have kind of come into the fold over the last couple of months as I've been doing this grand experiment called Fit and Famous by 40, which is I, Rachel LaForce, have declared on a public, very public platform Um, to a combination of almost 80,000 people that uh, I am going to get both fit and famous by 40, which is now in exactly 19 months. So set big goals, does she not? So, so many things to say, but here's what I want to update you, okay? I want to update you on, we're two months in, right? So the instinct is like, okay, so how's it going? Here's what I found. Two months is nothing. You've done really nothing. Like it feels like I have made all of these changes and done all these things. And I have, and also it's been two months time, which is nothing in the grand scheme of time, which we all know is an illusion and not real. Thank you. So I I wanted to check in with this, A, because if you've been following along, so many of you have been so supportive. I want you to know like how it's actually felt for me. And also I think this is important because I have invited all of you to join the pack and making, which it's kind of a double entendre, which is um, we're all making this kind of pack together, right? Of like, this is a thing that we're all going on this transformation journey and here's how we're going to change our lives. And also there's a pack of us, we're doing it together. And so maybe you've, made some very hard decisions. Um, You've drawn the line in the sand. These are the things I don't do anymore. These are the things I do do. This is the type of person that I'm becoming. And you've started this this evolution, this transformation journey like me. Or maybe you're like, um, still don't believe it works. (laughs) And uh, you go first, which also like, I'm here for all of it. Um, So if you have made that hard line in the sand and you've made a lot of changes and you're two months in and being like, nothing is happening. I just want to be a voice of going, uh, same. I briefly talked about it on, uh, such a lovely tenor. Okay. She was a musical theater major. We've got to move on. Uh, what I want to offer you, I talked a little bit about this on my social media, which is, A lot of times when we start something new and nothing is happening, that's in fact proof that something is happening because we live in a world of external validation and instant gratification. We live in a world of likes and shares. And if it doesn't happen in the first 30 seconds, then the algorithm pushes the video down or like we have been so conditioned to this hyper instantaneous illusion that it has permeated all of us and that's not good or bad. It's neutral of just like, that's kind of like them's the rules. So we just need to have this place of awareness that things take time and it's none of our business, frankly, like how long it does or does not take. Like I have found over the last two months, I have spent so much energy being like, is it working? Oh, is it working? Oh, I hope it's working. Is it working? It's like, oh, I'm sorry. You just thought you were going to like shed 40 pounds of fat and like build muscle and have like a million followers in two months. I mean, maybe, 
Maybe, maybe more a million followers. People, you know, go in crazy viral all the time, but like, you're probably not going to healthily drop 40 pounds of fat in two months. Right. And so I have found that the thing that I have rooted myself in, which is really what I want to focus on talking about today is this idea of daily devotion that we often identify. And I, I even talked about this I think both in the workshop and a couple of episodes ago of like, I want you to envision and figure out how does the version of you show up, feel and interact that version of you from May of 2026. That's when all of this, that's my birthday, May 1st, 2026. So it's arbitrary for the rest of you, unless your birthday is also May 1st, which is, that's wild. Um, but what does that version, if you're coming along on this journey, you're making this transformation, you're doing this work. We want to tap into what does that look and feel like. And uh, you guys know I love Nikki Novo. If you're not familiar, oh my gosh, welcome to like your new best friend. She is um, a wonderful intuitive and speaker and author and all of the things. Go and check her out. But she had a recent podcast talking about messages from your future self. And one of the things that she said that I wanted to kind of speak on today was this idea of like, when we also identify everything as a future self, we keep keeping it in the future. Like I was like, oh, I keep keeping the idea of like being fit and famous in the future. Now there's a balance of that, right? I'm not going to walk around and like with sunglasses and a hat on in Whole Foods being like, oh my God, I'm so famous now. Everyone's going to like want to talk to me in the sushi line. Like we're not delusional, but it is that again, what is tapping into that energy of our quote unquote future self of how does Rachel of May of 2026 walk, move and interact where I have found the difference between her and the things that I've even included into my schedule here recently to make these adjustments and what I've been doing razor thin, razor thin. And yet they seem so fucking hard, which speaks to what it is that we have done over and over again is, e is, is, it's just comfortable. It doesn't mean that it's any easier. That's the cheat, right? Like, um, even though my weight doesn't reflect it, I probably, um, which that gets into a whole thing about like, you know, bigger bodies are still healthy bodies. And like, that's not the way I want this conversation to go. Okay. But the point is, I'm sure the average bear, if they looked at my physical body, would be like, you know, if there was a list of like, what does she eat or how does she move her body? I think people would be really surprised at how active and how well I eat. Right. So making these adjustments to really jumpstart my hormones, jumpstart my metabolism again, post babies and like really get it moving again. These actions have not been very severe, but they've been far enough over and making adjustments to my daily life that they feel like a stretch, right? So I've been getting 10,000 steps a day, which maybe some of you are like, yeah, I get 15,000 steps a day. Okay. Catch up. And maybe some of you are like, I'm not even tracking my steps, right? We're all in different places. Um, but 10,000 steps is about five miles a day. Now, chasing two toddlers, I was shocked that I was not just getting that right away, right? And so the difference of slowing down within my work day to jump on my walking pad or to kind of like, you know, can I, our, our house is, we have three flights of stairs. So, okay, can you do the stairs a couple times? Like, they're not major adjustments. Counting my, my macros and making sure I get 157 grams of protein a day not that significant. I already eat pretty clean. I don't drink. So it's not like I was having to make all of these major adjustments at once. And in fact, right, that's what we talk about, that the most radical change and sustainable growth actually comes from razor thin actions. It's not this grand pivot, but in our minds, that's what stops us from taking those actions that benefit us the most because they feel so grand. When in reality, like, all right, Rachel, so you're basically just like eating less carbs, um, less dark chocolate, moving your body a little bit more and making sure you get more protein. That's pretty much it. You know, like I have a pleasure meal a week. So if I'm going to meet a friend for lunch somewhere and I want to be able to get whatever's on the menu, like there's no pressure. This isn't about being super skinny for anything. It's just, I want to be super strong and free in my body. So that's why we're making this choice. Which also, which is why I don't call it a cheat meal. I call it a pleasure meal because I'm not cheating on anything. Okay. Food is fucking delicious. 
and we should be able to sit down and enjoy a pleasurable meal without freaking out what's on our plate. Okay. Amen. Let me hear you. So those adjustments of this, how am I feeling in my body now? And like making a commitment to work out four days a week, which I've done at different times, right? But it's that consistency. When we're still being inconsistent and coming in and out, that's not helpful. And so then what we're doing is we're draining our own energy, right? And we're like, oh, this is so hard. It's like, is it? Posting once a day for your business on social media is a commitment. It's not hard, right? If you're running a business, that means you already have content and things to talk about. It's not that much harder. It's just making that commitment. So again, it's that razor thin difference. And why it gets hard is because our brains are so used to the wagon wheels of what we've been doing. I'm like, you're like, Rachel, what's a wagon wheel? Um, well, hopefully, you know, it's the wheel of a wagon, but um, Oregon Trail, you guys played it. Okay. <laughs> or you're Gen Z and you're like, I have no idea what she's talking about. Okay. But if you see um, like actual wagon trails, right, there's the wagon has already gone back and forth in that trail so often. If there's a walking trail by you, right, you can see where it's like, that's where the path is worn in. So it's easier for us to push the wagon along there because there's already grooves for it. If you're trying to create new patterns, it's harder to navigate this wagon because you're like, oh, there's not. And so it's not hard. It's not hard. It's just the difference of like, okay, so we're doing something slightly new. And so really what I've found over the last two months of doing all this is I'm like, oh, the time that I waste being like, is it working? Did people like it? Why is Instagram not sending my videos to everybody? Why? I don't know. I have no idea. Maybe, maybe these reels suck and people aren't interested. I'm a creative and I'll tell you, I follow a lot of people. I think they're pretty good and I think they're on the level. Why are they not reaching everybody? I don't know. It's not my business to run around, not every single day. Now, if you're sitting down to analyze analytics or something like that with your team or you're just getting started and looking at how do you want to present yourself online or whatever the thing is that you're doing, right? Like if you're dating, you don't need to come home from every date and be like, oh, why didn't that what didn't work or this or that? But like maybe over time after a couple of dates, it makes sense to sit in and check in and kind of see what's going on. So that's what this two month thing was for me where I was like, oh, I'm wasting so much energy by not knowing why it's not immediately working, which is insane and delusional. Even if like May of 2026, we didn't hit every goal. I guarantee you that whatever the intention was has come through in the most interesting way because when we make that daily devotion, when we become devoted to our daily lives, it takes us out of that like time suck. Like I realized I'm like, sure, I'm not in this place of where I want to be then, but we all know this, right? I'll get exactly where it is, quote unquote, where I want to be in May of 2026. Then what happens? New goals. You're right. So then I'm going to be chasing another carrot. And I was like, that's not the way I want to live. That's the antithesis of enjoying the ride. That's where sometimes like goal setting and, you know, like, just all of that kind of like hypo, like, I don't know, patriarchal, whatever, like energy girl boss shit is like annoying. Cause it's like what you're just going to keep. And I think that's also where this idea of self-help and all of this stuff where we get in our own way or people, um, don't strive for things in their life, frankly, is because, is because of that mentality and that energy a little bit. And as I think with everything, we get to fucking decide what it is and what we give weight to. And I was like, oh yeah, I have two beautiful children who absolutely exhaust me. Oh my God, this, I am so tired all of the time. And all of this is so hard. And I'm like, yeah. And also that's what abundance is. With big abundance comes great responsibility. Welcome, like, welcome to your life, dude. You know, like we have to stop with the, oh, this is so like, there has to be a place of flow. And that's actually what I've loved so much about the experiment of really falling in love with my body again, falling in love with like, this is a vessel that is here to take care of me, guide me, move me, and has its own divine intelligence that it wants to share with me 
in addition to mind and soul, right? And so by doing things that are challenging for my physical body, the amount of lessons that have already come through where it's like, oh yeah, if you show up and do what you're supposed to do on the mat every day or however you define that for yourself, like that compounds over time. There's no way that it doesn't. And I feel like the same is true for any of our other goals. Like we don't have, we're we're just overthinking all of it. Shocker, right? It's like we, we overcomplicate and overthink everything, which is why like I've basically boiled down my, you know, my Ted talk would be a sentence, you know, or two. Yeah. If you want to change your life, all you have to do is put faith into action. Like faith in action equals change. It's that, it's literally that simple. It's us that want to overcomplicate it. It's us that want to get in our own way. Like I, you know, where I'm even like, oh, I shouldn't have said famous because then people think this. Or it's like, but then it's okay to want to be famous. And like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is. Because again, it's not actually even about anyone else, right? It's this grand experiment for myself to not only create change and transformation, but to be evidence for other people, the simplicity of it. And that all we have to do is set the intention and then take the action towards that intention. That's it. And I, I really do believe now that the key to that is, and I've, I've said this a bunch, it's an, another spiritual teacher who I love, uh, Remington Donovan. And one of his teachings is that is, um, love the life you have and you will have a life you love. And there's like most things, such complexity and such simplicity in that idea. And that's how I've come to find it of like, I want to love the experiences I have now. I want to love like when I look at Rachel in 2026 and if I try to talk to her, she's so laid back. And I'm like, bitch, you know, (laughs) like how much magnesium are you taking? Why are you so laid back? And she's like, cause I just slowed down. Like I just realized that like everything I want is happening. So I don't need to run around and like micromanage to make it happen. And it's so hard for us to stay in that vibration of trust and to stay in that place. But I think I have the cheat code. Okay. I do think this is the hack. And it is that sense of daily devotion. When we, when I devote myself to moving my body because I deserve it. And when I don't psych myself out, uh, Oh, I don't have time to do this. Like I let dishes pile up. This is, I'm not happy to tell you this. Okay. But I let dishes pile up because I create this narrative of like, well, I just got to throw it in the sink and then I got to go. It's like, I'm sorry, you don't have another 90 seconds. You don't have 90 seconds. You're not on amazing race. You have fucking 90 seconds. Put your dishes away, you know? And so again, it's that razor thin thing because what happens is then later at the end of the night when I'm even more tired and I need to get my steps in and then I need to go to bed so I could do it all over again. Now I have a full sink of dishes that need to be tended to. So you do have time, you do have the power to slow down. And so it's like, you do have time and you also, you have time to make mistakes. I feel like there's been a few small mistakes that I've made recently and that like shame wave. I know you know it. You hit reply all and you were only supposed to hit reply or like you sent the text to the wrong person. And like we shame spiral. And I was like, you know, what's fucking hot. Somebody who makes a mistake acknowledges the mistake and then moves the fuck on. Do you know what's powerful? Somebody who hits reply all and then just responds, my apologies. And then we move on. We don't have to make a meal out of everything. That's the thing. Like you do have time. You do have the energy. You do have the money. You do have the resources. Even when you don't have the money, you don't have the time and you don't have the resources. Because when we slow down like, and, and look at what are the options on the table and come back to that place of trust, come back to that place of abundance, then we can figure out how to navigate what we need to do. I am facing some very big challenges that I'm not happy about. I mean, aside from fit and famous, like just 
personal life things, things with their business. And they all came to a head today. And it was that like, you know, where you just feel like you're Reagan from the exorcist and like your head is spinning. And I was like, hold on, let's come back in. This is not the end of the road. And even if this were the end of the road, there's another road that shows up. So we don't need to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Let's slow down and be like, all right, here's what we're going to do. Here's how we're going to navigate. And that's what it means to step into your power. That's what it means. And so many of us, sadly, we're not taught that. Women are certainly not taught that even still, you know, it's like, it, like, or we are all, we are taught that. And then you see powerful women and then we just love to break them down because we're mad that they believe in themselves, but that's a podcast for a different day. But you don't owe everybody everything and you're not going to do everything perfectly and neither is everybody else. And you're not going to sail your way into success and you're not going, you know, just all of these limited beliefs that we have and all of the ways that we think that things will or will not work out for ourselves. We would be shocked how easy everything can manifest itself if we just get out of the way and let it happen. And so I just encourage you as we go into, you know, the next month, cause we're going to, the, the pack will round table again in December, uh, in November, I'll start putting out that, um, how to join and, and all of that. So you can stay on the lookout for that, but you know, we have another month and then, okay, first quarter down, what did we do? What did we learn? Where did we find like our ick moments are right. And I have found, I have a lot of them. Okay. Not that I was shocked by that, but I was also like, wow, I am still really getting in my own way. And I want to be clear. It's not about perfection or this. It's just about what's an easier way of doing hard things. What is the easiest way to do hard things? Because being single is hard. Being married is hard. Uh, getting out of a marriage is hard. Uh, dating somebody new and falling in love, as beautiful as it is, it's hard. It's scary. Is this going to work out? Is it right? Like being pregnant is really hard. Not being able to get pregnant is really hard. Like just all of these aspects, you know, running a six figure business, very hard. Starting a business, also fucking hard. So, you know, Hating your body and not moving your body, really fucking hard. Moving your body four days a week, also really fucking hard. So we just have to get super clear on what is it that we do. Not, oh, I don't do this. I don't do that. It's like, we don't need to go there. What does the version of yourself that you're becoming do? Mine puts dishes away in the sink. Mine responds back to emails right away. Mine delegates what I don't have time to do. Mine takes a lot of deep breaths during the day. Mine has to remember that I have to slow down so that I can be fully present for my boys and show up for them, that they're the first priority, right? Like there's, there's all of these things that I'm finding on this rage, razor, sometimes rageful, the razor thin edge of transformation and becoming this new person. So I want to leave you with that. I think that's so much to digest. Uh, and again, I always talk about myself and my experience because I trust if you're here, you see yourself in my experiences. We are all having shared experiences all of the time. Even if your specifics are different, the energy is the same. And I think that that can be a real teaching tool. And also it's very, um, helpful for me, I think too, to, to kind of get an idea of, of where I am and what I'm working on. So A, I appreciate you being here and, and being a part of this journey and setting your own journey. If you didn't realize that you can set your own transformation journey, uh, along joining the pack again, all of that information is in the show notes. So you can click on all that. I've got the free recording is available for you and the free guidebook. So that way you can go ahead, um, and work your way through that. And then you can meet us at our next free workshop, which is in December. Uh, and yeah, there are a bunch of new offerings on my website. The Substack is available to you. Friends, take advantage of the Substack. It is $9.99 a month and chock full of value. Like I struggle more where I'm like, are we putting too much on here? Like I don't want to like overload people. So if you're looking for a place to self-guide 
what it is that you're doing, but you want some touch points. Like I said, there's a variety of teachers that I use along this journey that I'm going on now that I have used. I want to be of service to you and I want it to be at low cost. Please go and take advantage of that. So one last thing, if you haven't turned me off yet, if I haven't turned you off yet, will <laughs> jokes, they just don't stop. Will you go and leave the review for a podcast? I would love your review, an authentic review of how you feel connected to this podcast, how it's helped you, where you like to turn, you know, or even if you're like, uh, don't like her, she talks too much about herself. We'll take that too, you know, just give me some reviews. That's how these podcasts grow. That's how our opportunities for growth are created. And me doing this and even the, the fit part is pretty much on me, but the fame and the resources that I'm creating and the circles in the community is only possible because of all of you. And so I'm just so grateful to each and every one of you. I've been uh, meeting virtually more and more of you, which has been such a beautiful um, experience. So I'm really looking forward to seeing each and every one of you in December for our next workshop. In the meantime, tighten it up, tighten it up. We can do it. And let's find the easiest way to do hard things. All right. As always, tune out, tune in. Love you, mean it. Time, weather, and... Always. Pass.